being a process for some guys as you take a look at some notable uh, remaining RFAs with their hearing dates and the AAV of their previous deal. Jeremy Swayman um, just had his date, I guess, yesterday, so we'll see how that all pans out. Trent Frederick coming up tomorrow, Troy Terry, Ryan McLeod, and Drew O'Connor. Uh, did you ever have to go through arbitration? No. Thank goodness, right? But you've heard. It's not a pleasant process. It's not fun. I, I remember I got a phone call from my, my general manager at the time, Glenn Sather. He said, congratulations. I said, on what? He said, this is the deal. You, you took the deal, right? And I said, I haven't got the deal yet. I don't know. He said, well, if you don't take it, we're going to arbitration. And he hung up on me. So then I called him back and said, thank you, and signed uh -oh. the contract. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there it is. That's how the business is done. Even when you don't go, it's, it's uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable. <laughs> yes, it sure is. There are some guys, too, that are uh, pending RFAs or current RFAs, I should say, um, that are not arbitration eligible. So we'll see how all of this shakes out. Trevor Zegras seems to certainly be an important part of Anaheim's future and what the Ducks are trying to do, but um, that has not been resolved to this point. Do you think that, that he has proven that he is a valuable guy and that, you know, or why do you think that they should, you know, pay him the money, keep him around in Anaheim? I, I mean, you pay him what you think he's worth for yeah. sure, but you want to keep him. He's so electric. He's so much fun to watch. Uh, I think he's got a long way to go in his game, what he can be as a player. I think the sky's the limit for him. He, he can definitely develop more. But this is your leverage as a GM. You can't just start tossing money around right. for no reason. And Especially in a rebuild. Yeah, especially in a rebuild. So hopefully all these young players get to training camp. I think it's more important as you're a younger player to be in camp. Uh, but again, the agents will do what's best for their client, and, mm. and the GMs are going to do what's best for their team. So there's always... It's always a fun storyline, as long as you're not a part of it, Yeah. to follow along. How about one of your former teams, the Rangers, and what you think they should do with Alexi Lafreniere? I mean, what do you think the future looks like for him? What does he need to do more of to be kind of that superstar, a high draft pick? Well, I just think when he was playing really well a couple of years ago in the playoffs, he was, a, he was a meaner player. He was feisty. He was getting involved. He was yapping. He was running his mouth a little bit. But <laughs> it, it, he backed it up with his play. And... I just, I mean, I didn't play last year, so I wasn't on the ice against him, but it looked like that might have came down a little bit. Maybe when, you never know. I mean, Ryan Reeves made a lot of guys bigger on that team, but he played his best hockey, I thought, in that playoff run two years ago, and it's there as long as he realizes that competing is the number one thing. I mean, yeah. it doesn't matter anymore where you were drafted. It doesn't matter how many goals you had last year or True. the year before. True. So you go in and prepare. You try and get bigger, stronger, faster every mm -hmm. year, but have that chip on your shoulder, like, be a mean player. Yeah. Even if you're not considered a mean player. Yeah. Like, that's when he was playing his best, in my opinion. Absolutely. All right. Well, lots to uh, unfold and unpack over the next couple of weeks before we get to training camp time. Still plenty of deals that need to be signed in the meantime.